Hi there. I'm going to talk a bit about multiculturalism, and hopefully it will tickle your interest in a very pleasurable, non-sexual way, because it's a very big no-no to discuss it here in Sweden. And when I say discuss, I actually mean criticize, as that is a part of discussing something as well, but it's the criticized part that is the big no-no. A lot of people have seen my videos now, and I'm very glad of how constructive the conversation has been regarding these problems that we're facing in Sweden. There has been close to no well, you made your bed, now lay in it, type of attacks, and I've been very glad to see how interested and concerned people seem to be about Sweden's immigration issues and our political correctness. Because large groups of Swedes, nearly invisible in the public debates about these problems, are tired, just like me, and they know it's all bullshit and that the way we handle immigration doesn't add up economically or socially. So today, my fellow countrymen and those of you just interested in our political madness, I'm going to talk about another giant elephant in the room, namely, multiculturalism. <coughs> well, who wants multiculturalism and who is fighting for it so eagerly here in Sweden? Well, it seems that those who crave it the most are the people that never need to be exposed to it. I've lived in areas for all of my adult life that would be classified as being multicultural, but those who say that these areas are multicultural really have no idea what the hell they're talking about. But yeah, sure, these areas consist of 90% of people from Middle East or Africa, and if anyone wants to call that multicultural, sure, go, you know, go for it. But the fact remains that ethnic Swedes avoid these areas like the plague. I repeat, the ethnic Swede if possible, avoids these areas. For instance, on public transport when I'm on my way home, there is very often only me and maybe two ethnic Swedes. The rest of the bus is full of Somalians, Ethiopians, Iraqis, Syrians, Iranians, Eritreans, etc. etc. And when myself and the last ethnic Swedes finally jump off near the outskirts of the suburbs together with a clear majority of foreigners, we're still leaving behind a bus full of only foreigners. National economist Tino Sanandaji said in a recent lecture that as soon as an area in Sweden's demographic hits about 4% people born outside of Sweden, or people just with foreign descent, ethnic Swedes start to move away. Yet a majority of ethnic Swedes keep saying that they want multiculturalism. They just can't help themselves from getting moist from the concept, but they still don't want to live in the center of it. So these so-called multicultural areas fill up with mainly Middle Easterners and Africans, while ethnic Swedes just try to move away. But people like me, we stay behind due to, you know, the housing crisis and my shitty financial situation. So you have a small minority of financially weak ethnic Swedes, you know, drunk students or single parents, living with a vast majority of mainly Muslim Arabs and Africans. So there's your multiculturalism in Sweden for you. <laughs> the Swedes that are too poor stay in areas full of foreigners while those who have money stay the hell away. I, I don't know, I, I don't call that multiculturalism, I call that, I call that a ghetto. And the upper middle class and upper class ethnic Swedes then have the gall to accuse the working class living in these multicultural areas of being racist because they're criticizing the mess that hipster elitists have made sure that they're now forced to live in due to their financial situation. So these multiculturalists, they defend it because it's only a pretty idea for them. That's all it is. It's not reality, it's just something they can talk about. I mean, most Swedes with a degree from higher academia get really hot and bothered only from the, the idea of it. They drink a bottle of wine with their close friends in their all-white neighborhoods with fences and feel very comfy and warm inside for being such caring individuals in such a progressive country. They care, and all is well. Meanwhile, you know, in the rest of Sweden, gang violence is getting more violent, cars are being set on fire, car bombs, grenades, ambulance personnel and police get rocks thrown at them while trying to help people who are hurt in these suburbs, and women, for some odd reason, feel increasingly uneasy about passing through multicultural neighborhoods. And then we have the problem with school results. In these areas, the school results keep dropping behind, and about only 60% of students will finish with the grades needed to continue on to high school. And because of that, they will very likely face a future of immense difficulty in acquiring a job. Low-skilled jobs in Sweden are rapidly dying out, and even the high-skilled job market is difficult to get into without any form of social capital in this country. And then you have the language barrier and a whole load of other shit that we as a society need to solve. Multiculturalism is only a national accessory for rich white hipsters, nothing else. It's something to be proud of for these people, the people who never see it for real. 
It's a medal to brag about. But in some way they claim that they're also humanists and that myself and people with my views are racists. We the people have actually heard gunshots echoing two blocks down. But Sweden, a multicultural feminist nation. Sounds pretty nice, right? You know, I think it sounds more like a failed relationship. You see, I think that in any relationship you need to be able to compromise and to understand the perspective of others. Otherwise it will become abusive and consuming. So need I then explain that the ability to compromise and to see the perspective of others is severely failing when it comes to, for instance, Jewish and Muslim interactions in the Swedish suburbs. Jews get spat on by Muslims due to them both bringing the whole Israel-Palestine shit with them over the border. Historic grudges get brought into Sweden like carry-on luggage. Kids here get taught by their parents that this and this group are natural murderers and then expected to function properly together with them in a the school class. But hey, I mean it's gonna it's gonna work itself out. I'm just being negative. I'm such you know I'm just a cynical bastard about this this type of things. We just need to teach tolerance to a group of people that have been fighting since 1948. And the best way to do this is to jam them all together into what essentially is ghettos, while the rest of Sweden stays in wider areas. Brilliant, just brilliant. You can only get this type of brilliance from our dear Swedish politicians. Love it, just great. The feel-good left of this nation often believe that culture itself is relative. This idea is insane, and it's dangerous, and this is why. It means that those with greatly conflicting cultural ideas to those of the West won't ever need to adapt, conform, or assimilate. They won't ever need to compromise. You remember what I said about relationship and, you know, being able to compromise? This all means that ideas, they won't ever need to be sorted away due to them being shit. Now you see, let's instead just isolate these horrible ideas all into small secluded areas which people who can afford will instantly move away from. So that's pretty much the plan as far as I can see. This cultural relativism and the idea of it is in essence a shield against the progression of thought. For instance, the West has to a majority moved away from the idea that hitting your spouse would under any circumstance ever be acceptable, and the same goes for hitting children or calling for the death of the apostates or believing in witchcraft, because they're not morally defendable and they're non-logical. It's a form of Darwinism of ideas and concepts. This is a good thing. It means we're moving forward. But the regressive left we have here in Sweden are violently defending weak and shitty ideas. The PC left is actively protecting the survival of these ideas due to not demanding that those who come from different cultures adapt. Not asking them, not pleading, but demanding. A lot of groups in these suburbs of Sweden have ideas of anti-Semitism, sexism and theocratic views unfit to secular modern society. These ideas and acts are non-acceptable and the people holding them need to reform and adapt. Multiculturalism in Sweden means the protection of obviously conflicting, morally reprehensible ideas which in practice set the playing field so that different groups living near each other inevitably are gonna hurt themselves and others. Let's imagine that within a certain culture, infant girls get their tongues cut out at birth without any form of anesthetic. Upon hearing something like this, the cultural relativist and multiculturalist we have here in Sweden might very well then ask why. As if there would be any morally defensible reason to do such a sick thing against a defenseless child. What is the cultural context within which this act is performed? I mean, who are we to say that this act is wrong? We in the West aren't perfect. Questions like these from just politically correct assholes are what protects the survival of different disgusting cultural ideas as they transition to the West. It could have been a form of catharsis for the people coming here against sectarianism and racism, but this shit is protected and defended all under the flag of multiculturalism and tolerance. And people keep voting for this garbage and they defend it vigorously, but they're defending something which they will never live near or suffer the consequences of. Because when I hear police sirens in the distance echoing from these suburbs, I can only say, good job, progressives. You've made me and a lot of other people feel very culturally enriched. But I would say this, um, people who come as, as refugees, legitimate refugees as opposed to economic migrants, it seems to me we will miss a very important opportunity if we don't say one thing in particular to them as an agreement before they come, which is this. 
Um, Islam is to a very great extent, not, all, not entirely, but to a very great extent, what has screwed up the countries they're fleeing from. Um, sectarianism, the extremist interpretations, all that sort of thing, is to a very great extent what has screwed up the countries they're fleeing from. So in order to come into our countries, as a bare minimum, they should realize that that is the case, and that when they come into our countries, they are not to spend a significant amount of their time trying to repeat the experiment of the thing that made them flee before. Um, I, I don't know how you do it, but I...